Dave here, how are you? How often do you use a sander with a dust extraction hose behind it? How often do you use anything with a dust extraction hose behind it? All the time if you're me. And one of the things that annoys me about it is as I'm moving the tool that it's connected to around on the job, I have this hose following along behind me and every now and then it catches and uh, it's annoying. It's these corrugations on the hose that are doing it. Part of the thing that makes the hose flexible is also a downer for me. Now, the answer that I've discovered, and it's not my own idea, it's someone else, but the idea is to use braided cable wrap. Now the thing with this braided cable wrap, there it is there, I'll just show it to the other camera, is that it's, you know, a certain size, but when you pinch it and push back, it expands. Can you see that there? from thin to thick. I can expand it a little bit and slide the vacuum hose down the inside. And I'll do that now. So let's have a look. Slide, slide it in. Now this is, see, that's pretty easy. The section that I got is five meters long. So most Festal hoses are three and a half meters long. And this one is three meters because it's off the SysVac. But even so, I bought a five meter length because that's how it comes. <laughs> See it feeding down like a python swallowing something. So I'm pulling that through and through and through and through and through and I'm at the end. Now I don't want to go any further than that. There's a couple of ways we can secure it. You can either use a heat shrink like this or you can just use electrical tape. For people that don't know how to take the end off a back line, there is on the end this, these little pins that you push in. Make sure you don't stab yourself and you undo like so. Let's see how we go with some heat shrink. This is inch and a half heat shrink, but I shall cut that off. Like the scissors. <laughs> Alrighty, let's just take that back a little. I open the heat shrink up. What I'm going to do is slide the heat shrink down over it. Eventually, see it doesn't happen perfectly every time for me either. There we go. Slide it back down. The heat shrink. And then I'm going to pull it back up again. See that? I'm going to pull it back to there. Wasn't too hard, was it? So let's see what happens. I've got it set to 250 degrees. There she goes. So there we go. That is quite good. So that will stop it. Now all I'm going to do is slide this guy back onto the hose. Wind this on. Back to that. And then the fitting. Done. Connected. So there you go, that's the first part. I have it hooked onto there. Now I'm just going to drag it back along the length of the hose. And I'm back. And so now I'm going to give it a little nip where it is without cutting the hose itself. This is just something you want to be just a little care cautious with as you go. Done. Now I had, I had put shrink wrap on that end as well and it made the hose really stiff. So I thought how about instead of that I get some nice green tape and I've got the glasses on because it's going to make it a whole lot easier for me. How about I just use some insulation tape. Oh, 
around the end which will not be anywhere near as stiff not really the right color but you know what it will do beautiful let's see how that's going to go when I've got it on the sander that's better Okay, take it off the sander and wrap it up. Cool as this. Mm -hmm -hmm. In it goes. There you go. Totally up to you as to whether or not you'd want to go down the braided cable mesh sleeve to put over your hose or whether you're happy enough with the corrugations running over things all the time. So. This is a pretty good idea. Kill two birds with one stone, and it's cheap enough just to replace if you need to further down the track. I showed you two ways of securing it to the hose with the heat shrink, and the other way, electrical insulation tape. So there you go, thanks for watching. Keep on coming back, check the links in the box below, and see you next time, bye.